You know, why is the moral question of whether or not it's sinful or not to marry a close relative important? Well, the reason is the reason why I think it's important, the reason why I'm even thinking of it and, and, and thinking about the topic um, at all is because, you know, the position of a young earth creation is under attack. Uh, the position that, you know, the, the earth is only 6,000 years old, that God made it in six literal days, as we read in Genesis, is under attack. And one of the things they, they, they ask is, well, if Adam and Eve were a real story, and Adam and Eve were the first man and woman, where did Cain get his wife? You know, Ken Ham always jokes from Answers in Genesis. He says that's, you know, uh, there's a couple of questions that people always ask him whenever he travels around. And one of them is, where did Cain get his wife? Because we read about Adam and Eve, and then we read about Cain, Abel, and Seth. If you didn't know the answer, in Genesis 5.4, the Bible says here, and the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. So Adam and Eve did not only give birth to Cain, Abel, and Seth, they had sons and daughters. So Cain married his sister. But then the question arises, well, if marrying your sister is sinful, how can God allow Cain to marry his sister and allow that you know, incest at the beginning when it's morally sinful to do for us now? And this is the why, why I started thinking about this topic because it is an inconsistent position. It's a, it's a valid objection, right? To say, well, if you're going to take the position that marrying your sister or marrying your brother is sinful, then you have a dilemma. Because in the beginning, Adam and Eve gave birth to Cain, Abel and Seth and daughters. So then how did the race, how did the human race continue? So we have to come up with, a, with an answer to this question. And that's why I started thinking about it. Um, but that's, if you didn't know, that's, that's who Cain married. You know, um, when, I posted the, um, when I posted the video on, on YouTube, somebody made a comment on it, I don't know if you saw, but somebody made a comment and said, a theory might be, and I'd never heard of this before, a theory might be that, you know, with Cain, Seth, and Abel, God created them a wife out of their ribs, just like they did for Adam, um, and then you wouldn't have the problem of marrying your brother and sister because, you know, you, if, you, if you map out the family tree, as long as God did that to two of the sons and they had children, then everyone could marry cousins or, you know, a distant uh, niece or nephew or whatever, or a grandniece or a grandnephew, because the Bible only mentions aunt and uncle, niece and nephew. It doesn't mention your great, uh, your grand auntie, that, that, that sort of um, gap. But to me, to me, that doesn't make sense because to me, that is number one, it's an argument from silence, meaning it, you know, there's a crucial factor in there that, that holds that argument together that is not mentioned in the Bible because God did not mention that he did that for Cain, Abel, and Seth. And number two, you know, uh, in, uh, I can't remember whether it's in Genesis 5. Oh, was it Genesis? Maybe it's Genesis 4. Let me just go up here. Oh, my computer's running a bit slow. Genesis 4. Oh, maybe not. Oh, I'm just thinking of the verse where it says, and, and Cain called his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. So if God created women for Cain, Abel, and Seth, then how could Eve have been the mother of all living? Because she was going to give birth to everyone in the human race. So there's a couple of reasons why you know, I don't accept that argument. Um, but yeah, so that means that Cain, Cain married his sister. So then how, how do we understand this? So did God put Cain in a, in a situation where he had no uh, ch uh, choice but to sin? I, I don't think so. And that's why I have the position I do. And you know, you might think, um, you know, one, somebody brought this up uh, last week. They say, you might think, oh, marrying my sister. Like, yeah, that's disgusting. Because most people would have that, 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 um, that first thought. But the reason why I think most people have that first thought is because you grew up with your sister, you grew up with your family, and you know them so well, and maybe you don't like them or whatever, uh, and you know them so well that when you think about you know, marrying your sister, you just think, oh, that's disgusting. That, that, why would I ever do that? But just, just think about this for a second. Let's say um, you were estranged from your family, and let's say you, you had brothers and sisters in the world, but maybe you, you had been adopted off, and you met them, you met her again, you didn't even know she was your sister. 
And I, I know there are stories of that happening where people meet, you know, their close cousins or they meet a brother and a sister and they, because they were estranged, they didn't even know that they were related. Um, so it is possible for a brother to be attracted to his sister, um, but I just think generally people aren't because they grow up with them and they have that sort of relationship. And you know, there was something in the news um, a while back about the, the Duggars and how uh, Josh Duggar had, you know, inappropriately touched his sisters and blah, 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 and, and done things like that. And it was just interesting to see the reaction from a lot of Christians, because a lot of Christians would be like, oh, you know, it was, you know, obviously it was perverted and he shouldn't have done that. But, you know, some people were saying like, you know, he, he had a you know, perverted mind and, and it was just reprobate and like, how can you be attracted to your sister? But then, you know, your sisters are also girls. You know, they're girls and they have features that girls have that guys can be attracted to. And Josh Duggar is just a guy just like any other guy. You know what I mean? And he was in his teenage years. He did it when he, I think he was 14 and up. So he would have been, you know, raging with hormones. Um, and he did something he shouldn't have done. But I think the lesson we have to learn, I think a couple of lessons that we learn from the, ca the, the case of Josh Duggar is, you know, boys are not exempt from treating their sisters with all purity. Like the Bible says, you know, we treat younger women uh, as sisters with all purity. You're not exempt as a brother from treating your sister with all purity just because you're related to her. And even my wife, um, you know, her mum would often say to her when they were growing up to be careful of their brothers. You know, make sure that you cover up. Make sure that you're not just walking around the house in a bra. You know, make sure because they are boys as well. And she had known, she's known of instances before where brothers have taken advantage of their sisters. So I think it's important for us to note as parents that these things happen. And when we deal with our children, yeah, it's, you know, you know I don't think we should just let brothers just, you know, hug and just, you know, uh, be appropriate with their sisters just because, you know, it's, it's still a boy and girl um, relationship, even though they're blood related. Um, so sisters shouldn't compromise, I think, in the issues of dress and touch just because uh, they're your brother. And I think it's something um, for parents to take note of. But, you know, the reason why I, I, and just to go over this again, the reason why I don't think it's sinful is because in the Bible, there really only are two types of commandments from God. There's either the eternal moral law type of commandment, you know, murder, theft, stealing, and these things are always wrong. You know, they're wrong in every scenario. They were wrong before the Mosaic law was given. In the new covenant, they're still wrong. But then you also have temporary old covenant laws that were imposed on Israel until uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And these would include, you know, the Sabbaths, you know, food laws and things to do with the priesthood. But some people have tried to argue, um, you know, that Cain and Abel and Seth were able to marry their sisters on the basis, basis of genetics and say, you know, well, because of genetics, God knew that eventually at this point in time, it would be unclean and then he outlawed it. And the reason why I don't accept that argument is because I don't believe sin is relative to, to genetics. You know, it's, it's not that, you know, genetics all of a sudden gets to a point and then something is morally sinful because if it's morally sinful, it should always be sinful. So the reason why I take this position, and I think it's interesting in Leviticus 20, we won't turn there, that, you know, it is labeled as unclean, but isn't given a judicial punishment, is because it is unclean because of what we know about genetics. So am I encouraging people to marry their sisters and marrying close relatives? No, because I think the wisdom that we can glean from the Bible is, why did God make it unclean in the old covenant. He made it unclean because of genetics. So we can understand the passage there in light of what we know about science, but do we take the position that is a, it is a moral sin? I don't think we can because if we did, then we would have a conundrum if we take the position of young earth creation that Adam and Eve were a literal uh, couple that started the human race because somebody somewhere along the line would have had to uh, marry a close relative and that's the reason why I don't believe um, it's a moral sin, it's just unclean. 